And that is how I found myself driving to visit my sister on two daggers, a meat cleaver, a saber, and a six-pound slab of pork spare ribs, which we set to work preparing for our experiment. You know you're caught the cutting board upside down. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. They're all grooves to catch any liquids on the oh, crack side. I thought side. that'd be useful. Mm -hmm. See, and then there are these little feet help holding it in place. We chose to use pork spare ribs for our experiment. Pigs and humans actually have a decently similar anatomical structure, as anyone who's ever dissected a fetal pig in a biology class will know. This makes them an acceptable model for our purposes. Using ribs meant that there would be a large amount of bone exposed that had very little muscle or tissue over it. For some mysterious reason, my sister didn't want us doing this in her kitchen, so I set to work covering some boards with aluminum foil in a vain attempt to keep dirt off of the meat. This ended up being futile because the saber just tore apart the aluminum foil, and the sound of the boards in aluminum foil ended up drowning out a lot of the sounds we were trying to hear. This is a 19th century American cavalry saber replica. So it's used for historical fencing. It is in steel, I believe. So this is not sharp. An actual saber would be sharp both on the edge and the tip. And this will hopefully give it a nice, strong blow. This is very low. Oh look, roses. This isn't doing anything. Test one, unsuccessful. This next attempt is this kind of fake sword. It has a stainless steel blade, mostly for decorative purposes, but it is very sharp. This is much shorter than a Roman spatha, spathion would be. Wait, did we not talk about spathions yet? The book that started this whole question was set in the Byzantine Empire in the 11th century and describes the characters using spathions. The spatha was a Roman sword used from about the 1st century Anno Domini onwards, slightly longer than a gladius. Spatha comes from the Greek spatha, meaning a broad blade of wood or metal. This was then romanticized into the Latin spatha. A cool thing happens with plurals here. It seems that a singular Greek sword would be a spathion, but multiple Greek swords would be a spatha. In Latin, however, a is a singular ending, so spatha becomes a singular and spathai becomes the plural. The Latin spatha for sword then became espada in Spanish and simply spada in Italian. But wait. That should sound like an English word. Spade. But spade in English actually comes from the Old English spadu, which may have come from Common Germanic, but almost certainly has its roots in the Proto-Indo-European spadja, meaning a long, flat piece of wood. And this, it seems, is where the Greeks seem to have gotten their spathe. There's another common English word that comes from either the Latin or the Old English words. Spatula. Spatulas aren't even the only kitchen utensil from this root, however. The Old English spawn traces to spudge, and that's where we get our word spoon. But wait, there's one more connection between spades and swords. If you're familiar with Italian and Spanish playing cards. You'll recognize swords as the equivalent suit to spades. Okay, back to science. My idea is to try and shove this into the pork chain. <laughs> the neighbors are wondering about us. Um, see if I can get it between the ribs. Made a clicking noise? Yeah, you could interpret that as a rap. Oh, that was a that was a rap. Oh, oh. Okay, so I get that. It's very cathartic. 
Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, can you make the foil not rustle? Yeah, that grace. Okay. I mean, it's going from the interior side. Oh. Yeah, they could have covered that as grace, yeah, for sure. definitely. Yeah, all I hear is the plywood. Uh-huh. I think it would take a lot more effort to get a rasping noise. I think you'd like have to really be like grinding in. I want to try. Which, since most of the time in the places where they say metal grating on bone, you hear they're wearing armor. Like, I think you'd mostly hear metal on metal. I don't think you'd hear metal on bone. No rasping sound. I just want to stand here holding a saber. It's so cool. It's, it's really fun, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know anything about Byzantine armor. I think Roman armor, I think. Roman armor. Would there be a gap in the shoulder? And I, love, I had a book spot. on campus. It was Warriors and Weapons in the Byzantine era. So I imagine, like, if you were able to get into the shoulder, you have all the joints and bones Thanks, and the ribs. And if you have this option where you get in between the ribs, and then, what about if it was a different bone? Like, what if it's a larger bone, like scapula or something? It's one of the back. Yeah, this is shoulder. Um, I'm seeing as we were getting the best results on the back, where we had this big bone exposed. Uh, you also have to remember that these weapons are mostly being wielded by people who are like much stronger than us. Yes. So, so yes, iron can grate against bone, but maybe a better, different term would have been better. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Let's get okay, the cutting board. Let's go and see. Yeah, let's wash that off. Back in the kitchen. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's totally grating. Yeah. yeah. But, so this is, but this is the inside. This is not the skin side. Correct. Right, but think of like where your collarbone is. I can yeah. definitely see something scraping against your collarbone in that way. Here's the skin side. Yeah, you can get some rasping. Yeah. For sure. I mean, armor would get in the way, but it's doable. So it's more, it's not wrong, but it's pro might be more picturesque. Right. Do we want to cut the fat off? No! Oh. I that makes things delicious. Oh, sorry. That is delicious. Yeah, that'll be some nice seasoning too. Hot, no, we're washing that off. <laughs> okay. Cut. <laughs> You didn't think we are going to let the ribs go to waste, did you? In conclusion, a sharp edge seemed to be important to producing a grating sound. Use of sufficiently heavy force was beyond the scope of this research. The use of aluminium foil on a plywood base proved detrimental to the collection of audio data. Our research indicates that a preparation of Sus scrofa domesticus benefits from a higher concentration of allium seba. Lack of a control, unreliable data collection methods, and a complete absence of statistical analysis makes this research unsuitable for publication, according to my sister, who's like an actual real scientist.